Hi, welcome to Wet Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon, and I'm joined today by our, our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Nice to be here. Nice, it's nice to see you as always. Have you been diving recently? Um, a, a little bit, not much. I've done quite a bit of snorkeling, actually. We went on a family holiday down to see family down in the southwest of England, and I managed a little bit of snorkeling, which was nice, and actually was quite productive photographically, Very cool. getting in amongst the seaweed and, and shooting it right up at the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, excellent. Um, so um, what we thought we'd chat about today was um, competitions, and um, competitions are very much a part of the underwater photography scene, if you like. Um, we all enter competitions to win them. Um, and Alex and I thought we might spend a little bit of time discussing some ideas about uh, common mistakes that people make that, that will stop you from winning that big prize. Um, so, Alex, um, what, in your experience, has been one of the major mistakes that people make with their competition entries? Oh, well, there's, there's lots. I think the first thing is to realise that, you know, photography isn't a competitive sport, but when it comes to competition, this is a sport and you need to understand the rules and understand how to play the game. Yeah. And I think, you know, the prizes don't go to the best photographer. They go to the person who's best at entering photographic competitions. Yeah. And so being good at playing the game is a really important route to success. Yeah. I think the first thing to realize about that game is every competition attracts far more entries, hundreds, thousands more entries than they can possibly award. Yep. So the first stage of any judging process is to get reduce the number of entries down to a more manageable number for the judges to look at in real detail. Yep. And pictures that don't adhere to the rules in some way, you know, and the rules, you know, there's not always a lot of rules, but you know, if you don't follow those rules carefully, you are gonna get your pictures chucked out in that first round. Yep. And the majority of competitions, they're not going to give you feedback. They're not going to write you and say, oh, yeah, you entered a lovely picture, but it was in the wrong category, so we threw it out. They're just going to kick it out, and then you're going to be left going, why didn't I win with my lovely picture? Yep. So th the common things that you know get pictures knocked out of competitions all the time are pictures being put in the wrong category, and often it's a click button on a website or something, and you don't realize you've done it. So really do pay attention at that point. Often people are entering right up against the deadline. Oh, hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, it went down. Oh, do it again in a hurry. And that's when you make those sort of mistakes. Yes. You can upload pictures with watermarks accidentally. That's another really common one. Yes. And a lot of competitions, the organizers will often do a first look through the pictures. And even before the judges get to see the pictures, will have gone through and said, well, that one doesn't follow the rules. It's out. And this is when a lot of these pictures are going out. Pictures that are the wrong size. Competitions usually ask for a specific size of image. Yep. Sometimes it can be a maximum size. Sometimes it can be a minimum size. Sometimes it can be an exact size. Yep. But make sure you've read those rules and make sure you're adhering to them because it's another reason why you can get kicked out before the, the business end. So so I think also um, just, just worth mentioning that some contest categories have specific rules within them as well. So it's important to notice that if you've got a category that says that you can't edit your images, it's really important that you don't edit your images. Um, if you put an edited mm. image in there, it will get kicked out, no matter how good the image is. Um, and that's really important. So so be aware yeah. not only of the competition rules, but also it's the specific category that you're entering it into. Yeah. It, putting, putting a macro photo into a wide angle category, it doesn't matter how good your macro image is, it's not going to place it's going to get re removed. Um, and that's a great shame because, you know, if it was in the right category, it might do very well. So, yeah. But it's really worth reading those rules yeah. because sometimes the macro category isn't, you must use a macro lens. It's no, yeah. we want macro and close-up pictures. Yeah. And a great way to stand out in those categories is actually to use a wide angle lens. So it's all about reading the rules properly and, and, and playing the game. And if, if, you know, so, you know, on the rule front thinking well if this does get past the the technical requirements it actually is going to really stand out yep so absolutely. you know that's the whole playing the game type of thing yep. i can't remember if winning play those tricks but you know it's always worth trying but I, I do think that 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 next area is you know following the digital manipulation rules to the letter is absolutely critical yep. um you're never going to be able to break those rules and win certainly in any competition that's correctly judged yeah you know they you know if they ask for your raw files they're going to check your raw files and they're going to you know make sure you've done things how much you're allowed to do that varies a lot between competitions and it can be very difficult to gauge I and i think a lot of underwater photographers always struggle with this 
across all the competitions. Is this allowed? Is it not allowed? Some competitions are very prescriptive about what you're allowed. Yep. And others are, well, you know, we're not going to be too prescriptive because actually what you can happen if you become, you can use this, 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 and this, is people take everything to the max and they end up with a picture that's followed the rules but it's clearly gone too far for what the competition is doing. So yeah. as a general rule, if your picture needs loads and loads of work, chances are it's probably going to fall foul of the rules yeah but it, it is a variable variable scale that but the important thing is to follow those rules i think the other thing that can see pictures kicked out early on which photographers don't tend to talk about enough is the technical side of things yeah and the number of times you'll see a really good picture entered which is maybe not quite sharp where it should be yeah. you know the eye of a fisher or whatever it is yeah. and it's a perfect pose and everyone's like wow when they first see it it gets loads and loads of likes on social media but actually when a competition judge puts it full screen checks the critical sharpness it's like it's not there yeah. it's an amazing shot but it's not there yeah. or it's the same you know with with exposure being slightly off you know or or the picture's just got too much backscatter to work yeah i think backscatter some competitions allow you to remove it all, and that's great. Yeah. Some competitions don't allow you to remove any. Yeah. And if that's the rule, follow it. Because yeah. everyone's picture is going to have those few specs in. Now, if you've got some snowstorm picture, that's not the competition to enter it in. Yeah. But a few specs are absolutely fine. Um, a lot of black water shots are going to have backscatter in. Yeah. If the competition doesn't allow you to remove it, chances are most of the other competitors are going to have some backscatter too. And if you've got this perfect pose of this amazing creature, it's still going to do well because everyone's going to have some backscatter in those types of shots. And, and bear in mind, you, you may have a, an amazing picture, beautifully composed, beautifully shot, um, but it's, if there's a fin in the corner of it, which got captured in the frame and the, and the rules allow you to crop, you should crop that fin out. You know, th this mm -hmm. is the kind of stuff that, that will distract the judges. So, so make sure that, you know, even, even if the rules don't allow cropping, then possibly don't enter that particular mm -hmm. image or try and find a frame without the fin in it. Um, so look for those kinds of things in your imagery and make mm -hmm. sure there aren't any distractions in it that, that could either be cropped out or or possibly you have another shot that doesn't have the distraction. I think that's an important thing as well. Yeah, um, and, and that's a really interesting area is that a lot of competitions allow some cropping, yeah. but they don't allow digital manipulation. Yeah. So you're not allowed to clone the fin out, but you yeah. are allowed to crop it out. Yeah. Yep. And you know those are the sort of things that the, the 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 successful competition photographers are very you know know the rules and play to the rules. Yep. Um, and you know both are achieving the same thing, but one is doing it correctly by the rules, and one aren't. So remember, this is a game, and you've got to follow those rules. Yep. The next really important area I want to talk about um, is competitions don't want to award ethically ethically questionable images. Yeah. And I think that competitions around the world are becoming more and more aware on this. And there are definitely types of pictures that maybe five years ago would get awarded, nowadays are, are, are not awarded. Yeah. And I think it's really important, first of all, we shouldn't be taking those types of pictures, yeah. but also in terms of competitions, if you don't want to be knocked out in the early early stages, don't enter those types of pictures because generally judges are always going to play on the side of caution. Yeah. They can't tell always from a picture if it's been manipulated or not, but a question a lot of judges will say to each other is... It might have been. It might have been manipulated. Yeah. Do we want to promote as a winning type of picture, a type of picture that would leave other people to copycat that picture? So maybe this photographer didn't manipulate it, but the, the, the judges don't want to promote that type of picture. So if we knock it out now because we say we don't feel comfortable with it, no one ever knows and there's no debate. Yeah. If it goes on to be, to be a winner and then people debate it, then it becomes a much more complicated situation. And even if you look back at old competition results and say, well, I've got a shot like that, it was a winner in the past, but maybe it was a bit ethnically question questionable. Remember, sometimes judges do make mistakes yep. and they don't want to make mistakes all the time, so they're likely not to award it. The whole argument, well, one of these won in the past is not gonna wash. No. And also I think the, the community has become much more alert to this, so it's important to do it. And I think one of the one of the effects of social media as well is that these subjects are much more openly discussed. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, in general, ethically dubious images or images that might be ethically dubious, possibly worth describing them, will get picked apart. And unfortunately, we're in a situation where you almost have to prove that it wasn't in order to, and that's very hard to do. So, so if you've got an image that 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 may be construed as being ethical, you probably find it won't get awarded. So. Um, 
Mm. And that, that's that. I mean, I have to say that there are problems with that as well because you know the, the strange things happen in the ocean, and you know you'll see things that you don't expect to happen. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, and people enter their pictures that are those once in a lifetime yeah. moments and encounters. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've plenty of times seen frogfish pick up and swim on their own. Yep. Yet I would probably never award a swimming frogfish shot in a, you know, unless it was a um, sargassum frogfish or something yep. in a competition. Yeah. Not because maybe, you know, I know it can happen naturally without them being disturbed, yeah. but I don't want to promote that type of picture as a, as a, as a type of, of, of winning shot. So it, it does become a little difficult. However, I do think you've got other avenues to use those pictures. Yeah. If you have got pictures, you can publish them in an article and, and then explain. Just describe what's going. it. Yeah. I think yeah. that brings those pictures and it's it's more remembering that you know competitions is just a part of photography it's not the whole focus of things so those pictures that brings us very uh, neatly think, onto onto the other subject which is when we're selecting images for competitions and um, one of the mistakes i think people make is is that they'll often enter um images recording events or possibly species that are very um, very iconic or very rare or very special um but bluntly are not wonderfully shot. And you have to bear in mind that these are underwater photography competitions. So what we're looking at, what judges are typically looking for is they're looking for beautifully shot images. Um, and to be fair, those could be of relatively mundane subjects. So an image of a subject that is relatively mundane and beautifully shot will probably do better in a competition than an extremely exotic species that's not as well shot. So when we're selecting images, try and go for the quality of the image rather than necessarily the quality of the subject. Um, I think that's a reasonable thing to say. Yeah, I think the way I've always summed that up is you're more likely to succeed with your best pictures not your pictures from your best dive of the year. Yeah. Um, and I think detaching yourself from that emotional involvement can really help you choose your pictures. So I think one thing that's really helped lots of photographers down the years is to discuss with other people their entries. Yeah. Because I think that helps you get around that emotional um, uh, attachment, investment to your shots and therefore put the right pictures into the frame. And I think, you know, but I think the final thing you should always close any competition chat about is, don't take the results too seriously. Yeah. Um, if you've got good pictures, you're likely to win regularly, but you're not going to win every time because different sets of judges is, or even the same judges on a different day are going to go for different shots. Yep. And as a result, you know, don't make it the be all and end all of everything, the results. So when you do win, don't get too carried away with it because the luck just went your way that day. And when you don't win, don't get too depressed about it because, again, the luck didn't go your way that, that day. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And I think maybe to top it all, the most important thing is to follow the rules. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Alex, very much. Um, that's been a great conversation. Um, um, Alex has got lots of award wing images. Um, you can see them on amustard.com. Yeah, I'm sure you can find some on there. And some which are bound to be, you know, future award winners. Some future winners. That's great. Um, Thank you, Alex. Um, thank you all for watching this. Um, and thanks very much to our sponsors episode, which is Icolite. Um, please feel free to subscribe to the channel to be notified of future episodes. Um, and we are playing another one on competition. So if that's of interest, that's coming up soon. Um, and please like this video, if you assuming you enjoyed it, and add any um, suggestions for future topics in the comments section below this video. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you soon.